marches gathering into the zone. Score! Echo wins it and the Sun Devils make it 18. Hello and welcome to the first episode of Hell Frozen Over. I'm Nick Lacalzi and joining me tonight is my co-host, Austin Controllis. We will be with you every Wednesday night to recap this past weekend's games, catch up with head coach Greg Powers and one player guest, and preview the weekend's upcoming series. Yeah, Nick, great to be here with you tonight. And uh, the Sun Devils have started the season off 7-0. and They're currently ranked number 7 in the ACHA rankings. They started the season off with a pretty easy series against NAU, then had the rival Arizona Wildcats come to Oceanside. They uh, won the first game 6-3, to had a 2-0 lead in the second game, kind of let that one slip away, but then Captain Colin Heckle won that one in a shootout with a great goal. They uh, were at the ACHA Showcase this weekend in Springfield, Illinois, the only team to come out of that tournament undefeated, zero losses. Walk us through how they did. Yeah, you're exactly right, Austin. It was a pretty big statement by this Arizona State team, and it started off with Kent State. Head coach Greg Powers said they didn't play their best game, but when you don't play your best game and you still have a 5 to nothing victory, it's a pretty big win. Two goals from Danny McAuliffe. Corey Frank, two starts, two shutouts. He's looked pretty outstanding in goal so far for Arizona State, the first time that they've had uh, what appears to be a reliable backup in quite some time. In the second game against Delaware, ASU got some big contributions from their big guns. Dan Sterner got his team leading 11th point by uh, scoring a goal on that one right before he got ejected. And then it was the captain, Colin Heckel, doing it again. A pair of goals, including the overtime winner for ASU to defeat number 6 Delaware. The biggest win of the tournament for Arizona State. And Heckel's now had a hand in two of ASU's three overtime and shootout victories. So we call Patrick Lynn Captain Clutch, but I think that nickname's starting to uh, tilt over to Captain Canada now as well. And the third game, the Sun Devils got off to a little bit of a slow start against 15th-ranked Liberty. It was a real early start for them, Arizona time. It was the third game of the weekend. It was Sunday morning. The team was looking forward to the flight, but they were able to dig deep. They forced a shootout, and it was there where their goaltender, Mark Shacker, really bailed them out, stopping 7 of 9 in the shootout before the freshman, Stefan Jensen, sealed the victory for the Maroon and Gold. Yeah, great weekend from the Sun Devils. Look strong all the way through, like Coach Power said. Wasn't their best hockey, but they're getting better with every game. That's what really matters. Hopefully they can reach their best this weekend against number one Lindenwood. When we come back, we're going to sit down with head coach Greg Powers, and he's going to talk to us about this upcoming matchup with Lindenwood, how they did at the ACHA Showcase, and overall how the team is looking here. Stay tuned. You're watching Hell Frozen Over. to the challenges before us. Arizona State University. Catering to luxury living, Dolce Villaggio is a modern townhome community located at 2nd Street in Hardy, near ASU, Tempe Arts Center, Sky Harbor Airport, and the Metro Light Rail. Dolce Villaggio offers two and three bedroom homes featuring exquisite kitchens, granite counters, stainless steel appliances, comfortable living areas, two car garages, plus the community pool and spa. For pricing and availability of these gorgeous townhomes, visit our website at www.dolcevillaggio.com. Dolce Villaggio, the place you want to call home. 
Welcome back to Hell Frozen Over. Joining us now, head coach Greg Powers. Coach, this past weekend, you were the only team to come out of that showcase undefeated with ranked teams like Delaware, Davenport, Ohio, and Adrian all losing at least once. What do you think this says about this program this year? Again, it's, it's nice to have you know been the only team to go there and go 3-0, and but at the end of the day, it, it doesn't mean anything. Um, you know, it, it's, it's something to put on the website and in the papers and, and whatnot, but, um, you know, at the end of the day, we had a, a win in overtime and a win in a shootout, and, uh, you know, we think those those both were against teams that we need to be in regulation, so we have a lot of work to do, but we're happy about the 3-0, and uh, but it's onward and upward and, and much tougher competition this week. Coach, you've taken this team a real long way in the past four years since you got here and since I got here as well, and I don't think enough can be said about the job that you've done. What do you think was really the turning point for this program and getting this to where they are today? It's just, you know, there's a lot of things. I mean, there's a lot more people other than just me that have done it. You know, we have a tremendous general manager in Ken Lynn that puts in an exorbitant amount of time and is very dedicated to our success. and. There's other people um, outside of me, but at the end of the day, the reason why we've gotten better is just because of recruiting, and I've made a, a firm commitment into, to bringing in very good hockey players here, and we've been able to do that, and that's why I think we are where we are. You're only as good as your players. Coach, you mentioned the recruiting. You've brought in guys like Joe Schwager, like the captain this year, Colin Heckel. Uh, Colin had a huge goal against number six, Delaware, to win it in overtime. Talk a little bit about that and his play. He embodies what a coach wants a captain to be in every sense, on and off the ice, in the room, uh, clutch goals, leadership. He plays both ways equally as hard. Uh, he's likable. Yeah, everybody in the room follows him and, and, and follows his example. So he's doing everything I'm asking him to do, and, and I couldn't be happier with him and the rest of the captains for that matter. And speaking of the rest of the captains, Coach, Dan Stern has gotten off to a, a pretty huge start so far this year for ASU. He's leading the team in points with 11, second in goals to Colin Six. Dan has five. Can you talk about Stern as play and how he's adjusted to kind of controlling that second power play unit for you guys? He's playing outstanding. Um, he's on a roll right now, and, and he was playing really well Saturday and took a, an absolute moronic penalty that's out of character for him. But, um We've sat down and talked about that, and I don't think that's ever going to happen again. And I, I, it, well, let's just put it this way. It better not ever <laughs> um, And uh, we sat out Sunday, and, and, and he's a kid we need on the ice. He's just that good. you know. And, and when he's going, he's, he's a tremendous hockey player, and uh, we sorely missed him on Sunday. So um, but I couldn't be happier the way he's playing. Darcy's really come on, and then Danny Anderson has just been an, a, probably our most consistent two-way forward through seven games, and he's a fourth-line center and assistant captain. So, Coach, Corey Frank got his second shutout of the year already against Kent State this weekend. You've kind of struggled to find a goalie depth the last three years. Can you talk a little bit about the depth you guys have at goalie this year? It's a luxury that we haven't had, you know, and I think that, uh, you know, the other guy that nobody's seen yet is Greg Homer. He's, he's There's days in practice that go by that he's by far the best goalie out there, but um, so we are, we're really three deep. Um, Corey has done a tremendous job when called upon and couldn't be happier with Corey. Obviously, he hasn't let a goal in. Um, so, you know, but Shacker's our guy. I made it clear to both those guys that, that they're going to watch a lot of hockey this year. He's earned that. He's a second-team All-American. He's uh, been pretty much the main catalyst, you know, above and beyond any other player, even a Joe Schweiger, Mark Shacker. Um, is probably the, the biggest reason why this program is where it is. Coach, we've looked back a, a little bit. Now let's look forward. 7-0, and the number one team in the country, the Lindenwood Lions, making their way to Tempe. You guys had them on the ropes the last time they were here two years ago. Last year the story was a little bit different. Are you putting any more emphasis on the games this year? No. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, we we, we got to line up no matter who we play the same way. And, and we have so much confidence in our ability and, and chemistry we have in our room and uh, you know you know if it's Lindenwood or it's Davenport or if it's U of A or whoever we got to line up the same way and make those teams play us that's how much confidence we have in ourselves we have a long way to go we can be much better than we've shown and we've been um, but uh, I think I have the team uh, here now that, that, that is going to play to the level of its competition and this weekend we have number one so we got to play like number one. Coach the last time you played this Lindenwood team let's go back to Mark Shacker a little 
he kind of struggled. He let five goals in one game, seven goals in the other. What's he really going to have to do this weekend to play well and basically get you guys the win? I mean, those two games last year, you know, they were pretty much the only two games that he did semi-struggle in. I mean, we all struggled. Everybody struggled in those games. Um, you know, Lindenwood's a team that if you fall asleep on them, they're going to bury you, and they did that to us. Um, but, uh, you know, Shax is ready. Shax is ready. He's always ready. Um, I think those two games last year were more of an anomaly than anything. So uh, we know what we're going to get out of him this weekend. Everybody else just has to follow suit. And, Coach, let's break down Lindenwood a little bit. They lost the ACHA Player of the Year in Corey Spradling and their number one goaltender in uh, Robbie Cavallari. But they are returning some big guns, Grant Gorsica, Colin Long, Brett Morrell, all still on that Lions team. How are you planning on stopping them? Because they put up some big numbers against you guys last year. They did. Um, they lost a lot of firepower, but but they're a good program. And, and this, like you hear me say it all the time, this is a reload league. It's not a rebuild league. You can reload very quickly and, and get good teams in immediately, and that's what they've done. They have a lot of good new players, and, and they're still trying to find their way chemistry-wise just like we are. Um, but I, I know that on paper we're just as good. And our guys have all played the same places their guys have played. Um, and, and from a pedigree standpoint, we're just as good, if not better. So, um, you know, we're not afraid of anybody. You know, and, and it doesn't matter if it's Lindenwood or whoever. Um, you know, I think we're at the point now where teams have to prepare for us just as much as we have to prepare for them, and that's just reality. Coach, if you sweep Lindenwood this uh, weekend, there's talk that ASU could be number one in the standings. What do you think that will do for the team, for the program? What does that mean to you? Well, I mean, it's important. And, and, again, we're focused on Friday. We're not focused on Saturday yet. But if we were fortunate enough and play well enough to make that happen, I think that we certainly could warrant that uh, number one ranking based on what everybody in front of us has done. And I think that would be pretty special because this program has never been there. And um, rankings actually really matter in this league because you're playing for the best seed you can possibly get going into the national tournament so you can play a, a lower-ranked team in the earlier rounds. So rankings mean everything. Um, I think that uh, right now at 7, we're probably uh, a little underrated based on what we have on paper, but I think we're probably right about where we deserve to be based on what we've done on the ice thus far. So. And, Coach, a, a whole bunch of new faces this year. Can you talk a little bit about the guys like Delinsky, Ben Finley finally got the monkey off his back, Stefan Jensen with the shootout winner. These these young guys, Delinsky, a sophomore, was the rookie of the year last year, but guys like Finley, Jensen, even Liam Norris, they're putting up big numbers, and Finley and Jensen might have gotten off to a little bit of a slow start. How crucial are they going to be once they get into the rhythm of this league and, and pairing them with guys like Heckle, Jansen, and McAuliffe? All four of those guys are huge, huge cogs to, to our engine. I think what we're trying to get through to those those younger kids is that they're used to putting up like Stephen Jensen 91 points in juniors. Leon Norris was a over a point per game guy in the Alberta Junior Hockey League. So was Benny Finley. But um, and then Kale obviously had 77 points at Minot last year. But this is a balanced team. This is a balanced team one through four. We want to wear teams down with our depth and our skill. And those young guys got to realize, and, and and I think they're starting to that just because they're not on the score sheet doesn't mean they didn't have a good game. They're doing a lot of little things really well. So we're really happy with how they're all playing, and if they keep doing what they're doing, the goals and the points, they're going to come. Well, thank you, Coach. We look forward to seeing how you guys perform against number one Lindenwood this weekend. Coach Greg Powers will be here with us every Wednesday to walk us through what's happened, uh, talk about team chemistry, what the upcoming series, anything you can possibly think of. That's all the time we have for this segment on Hell Frozen Over. When we come back, Captain Colin Hecker will sit down with us. Imagine what it feels like to be a champion. To have sold out crowds every game. To know that night in and night out, your team is the best. 1-0 pitch, swung on and this loop into shallow right field. That'll drop and the Sun Devils have won it. We all want to win, but are you willing to do what it takes to get there? Are you willing to make a year-round commitment to being a Sun Devil? Will you be there for us every game, helping us win? Make a difference by joining the Sun Devil Club. It's one thing to be there when history is made, but wouldn't it be great to know you helped make history? One devil at a time, we all join the club.
In the need for a bartender? A bartender offers old-fashioned service mixed with a contemporary style. Professional bartenders are available for your next wedding, mixer, graduation, pool party, or banquet. To order service for your upcoming event, call 602-410-2227 or visit heybartender-az.com. Maybe you think work stops at 5 o'clock, that the evening is a time for watching TV, taking a little walk around the block, or hanging out with friends. Maybe you're the type who does some light reading. For Sun Devil football, no matter what time it is or where we are, the work never stops. It's time to go to work. It's time to be a Sun Devil. Welcome back to Hell Frozen Over. I'm Oscar Controls with Nick Lacazza. We have the captain, Colin Heckel, here with us now. We're going to grill him with a couple of questions. Colin, let's start by talking a little bit about the showcase this weekend and how the team performed. Uh, I thought we were pretty good. Um, came out strong, 5 nothing win, and then uh, let Delaware back in that game and had to win in overtime. And then slow start, obviously, against Liberty, but uh, we battled back through that one. And uh, 3-0, and we can't really complain. Colin, can you just compare this team a little bit to, to the team last year and where you feel you guys are at right now and compared to where you were a season ago? Um, it's it's a completely different dynamic. It's uh, a lot more depth uh, in all positions, goalie, defense, forwards. Um, I, I feel like the team chemistry in the room is a lot better, um, and we're 7-0 right now. You can't really you know, complain about anything in the, in the locker room right now. Colin, you've had an overtime goal now, a shootout goal. You have that C on your chest. Does that change your mindset coming into these overtime games or these, shootout, or these shootouts, or is it the same mindset you've always approached these uh, situations with? You know, it's guys. Guys are looking at at me to perform, and it's it's been like that through a, a lot of hockey that I've played throughout the years. So, it's I go into those uh, overtimes and and shootouts with the same mindset every game, and. Uh, just do the little thing right, and hopefully you get an opportunity to put one in the net. Colin, we asked Coach Powers, and he said that you guys weren't really preparing any different for the number one team in the country. But coming off the big sweep, being number seven, knowing how many teams above you lost, what's the feeling like in the locker room? And are you guys kind of getting more geared up for this, knowing that the number one team in the country is coming into your barn? Well, we're, we're obviously uh, going to be a little more focused for this game because we know um, they're a better team than we've played yet and we have to play a full 60 minutes hard to beat them and I have uh, no doubt in my mind that we can beat them this this weekend. Colin, you've had a lot of new faces on this team. Uh, I believe 13 new faces to be exactly. Who's really stuck out to you so far? Um, you know, Kale Delinsky uh, obviously was rookie year last year. Uh, he's continued, I guess, where he left off. He's playing great. Um, Ben Finley, my line mate there, he's, uh, he struggled a little bit at the start, but he's he's coming along great. He's a hard worker, fast skater, and he's got a great shot. He's going to be putting up big numbers for us this year. Colin, the depth on the blue line is something that this team hasn't had in quite some time. Right now, Ryan Clark and, Ryan Clark, excuse me, and Brian Parson seem like they're one of the best pairs in the ACHA. I believe Coach Powers said that they haven't even been on the ice for a goal against. They slid Maltese and Charwire, your number one pair, down to number two this year. And Hughes and Harkoff are... are playing pretty well as well. Can you talk about them? Yeah, yeah, I can. <laughs> uh, you know what? It's it's nice to have a, a defense core that's that has that much depth because then you, you're not you're the Ford's more worried about the uh, offensive side of the game. They're not worried about if the puck gets past them. Their defense are going to get beat and they're going to get a shot on net, a good quality chance. Uh, with the defense we have this year, uh, you're not worrying about that that much, so you can focus more in the offensive zone and uh, just rely on your defense and your goalie to uh, keep the puck out of the net. Colin, the only game you guys have been down so far this year is against Liberty this past weekend. How do you feel the team really responded to being down for the first time all season? Um, you know what? It was. It was. I. I kind of feel like it was a shock for some of the new guys just to. They had to realize what they had to do in that type of situation. So uh, we kind of got back in the locker room after that first period, calmed everyone down, and just got back to our game plan, and we were fine after that first period. 
Con, last year you guys struggled on the power play a little bit. This year that has certainly not been the case. You're connecting it, I believe Coach Power said, 34%. You've got two units that are running two different things. You're the centerpiece on your power play, Dan Sterna on his. Can you talk a little bit about why the power play has been so successful? You know what, it's, uh, unfortunately it's mostly been uh, Sterna's power play that's been on that. <laughs> but, uh, you know what, they got some some good players on that power play like Rogan he's he's so smart with that puck and uh, he distributes it very well um, my power play we uh, you know we got one goal last weekend and uh, we just got to start looking for each other and f- seeing what works well in our power play and get that one working too well thank you Colin good luck this weekend against Lindenwood when we come back we're going to give you a little preview of the ASU Lindenwood series coming up this weekend lost that love and feeling, donate it to Good Wheels. Your unwanted vehicle will help fund job skills training and human services programs for disadvantaged Arizonans. You'll even receive a tax deduction. So call 602-416-6278 for more information. Or visit us online at www.goodwillaz.org. Good stuff, good work, good will. Tacos? Nah. Burgers? Yesterday. Right. Mm, I'm thinking. Mongolian. Looking for a fresh, healthy alternative? Take a trip to Genghis Grill. Spice up your favorite meats and seafood, then load up on veggies. Choose a sauce and let our Genghis Grill masters cook your selection to perfection. Genghis Grill, masters of Mongolian stir fry. Hey, go vegetarian. (laughs) Ah, chicken. Me too. Mm. Uh. return to Oceanside this Friday to take on the number one team in the country, the Lindenwood Lions. Catch this exciting matchup Friday at 8, Saturday at 6 on FastHockey.com. Welcome back to Hell Frozen Over. I'm Austin Contreras, Nick Lacazzi. Nick, number one Lindenwood coming in this weekend. You've seen them three times now, right? This is a really good team. That, as we mentioned, they did lose the ACHA Player of the Year, Corey Spalding, and their All-American goalie here. Who do you expect to really step up for them against ASU? For the Lions, I think there's really three core guys that you're looking at. Grant Gorsica, Colin Long, and Brett Morell, who Morell, to me, really stood out the most in, in Missouri last year when the ASU traveled down there. He only had four points, but the kid was just all over the ice. To me, he was the best defenseman that I had seen in my three years in the league. Ryan Clark might be starting to push him for that title for ASU that we've seen thus far, but a lot of firepower on this Lindenwood team, and we actually saw ASU play better two years ago than we did last year. Uh, they almost took them down when they were in Tempe two years ago. They really folded late in a game that ASU should have won, and then last year the Sun Devils just had probably two bad periods, one in each game, and they really never were able to get back into them, and Lindenwood kind of just wiped the floor with the Sun Devils. Once the Sun Devils went into meltdown mode, that was it. The Lions just don't let up, and they don't take their foot off the gas, but this is a different Sun Devil team, Austin, and I think you could see it, and you're now almost a year and a half with ASU. What are you seeing different from the Sun Devils? Kale Delinsky has been a big addition, of course. He has 10 points already. Dan Stern has really stepped up. He has 11 points, five goals on the season. Kid wanted 30 on the season. <laughs> he might get more than that at this rate. But this team is faster. They're more skilled. And they're just, they're going to out, uh, 
excuse me, they're going to be faster than all the opponents they face here. And I think that's really going to help them. They don't really have the size that the team had last year, but I don't really think it's going to matter because they're, they're so fast on the ice. Now, Nick, you mentioned last year they lost to Lindenwood 7-2 and 7-3. Two really bad periods was all that weekend was for the Sun Devils. What do you expect them to do? What are your predictions for this weekend? I think a realistic prediction would be a split. I Obviously, you hope for the sweep. I don't know if the Sun Devils are going to have that in them, but if there's any team that's going to do it, it's going to be ASU. I think it's really going to come down to Mark Shacker and how big he can step up for ASU. He's been tested a few times. He stepped up big in Delaware. He stepped up against Liberty, but it's not Nothing like he's going to face with this Lindenwood Lions team. ASU's really outshot the majority of their opponents in every game by almost double. They're averaging something like 45 shots to giving up about 25 a game. And with a team like the Lions, it's going to be a lot more close to even than it's been in the past. The Sun Devils defense has done a great job, and their offense has done an even better job really controlling the puck. Sometimes they say the best defense is a good offense, and I think ASU has had that so far this year. Yeah, it really should be interesting. The thing that stands out to me with this Lindenwood team is they really haven't played that much hockey, and I think that's where the Sun Devils can really come and bite them in that st- uh, in that way. I mean, the Sun Devil team, 7-0, they've been on the ice a lot longer, and I think they have more chemistry, and that might help them get the sweep here and move to number one. We mentioned earlier this ASU team, 13 new players, 11 freshmen. Out of those new guys, who has really shined in your eyes? We talked about Cal Delinsky earlier. I don't think enough can be said about the, the way that Cal has played. Ryan Clark has been fantastic on defense for ASU. He's really been a guy that kind of flew under the radar. Coach Powers talked about him, but he was like a hidden gem by the time he got out on the ice and just seeing all the stuff that he could do. Liam Norris, uh, maybe the biggest surprise up front. He was, he's been playing on the third line, but he's racking up the points. He has something like six or seven points already. Ben Finley's looked good. He's shown a whole lot of flashes. He finally got off the board. He's a guy that I expect to break out for ASU. And Stefan Jensen's had all kinds of opportunities as well. He was a little snake bitten early on. Then he got hurt, but he came up with the big clutch goal in the shootout to win it for ASU. And then you go to Hughes and Harkoff on the blue line. And when that's your third pairing, you're in pretty good shape. Yeah, you mentioned Norris. I believe he has eight points now, uh, two goals, six assists. He's really stepped up for the Sun Devil team. We talked about Colin Heckel's overtime goal against number six, Delaware, this past week, and we actually have the highlight for you, and it's our play of the week. Probably the biggest goal of the season for ASU. Colin Heckel in overtime against the sixth-ranked Delaware Blue Hens. The biggest team that ASU's faced this year, and it gave the Sun Devils the victory. A game that, according to Coach Powers, they were pretty much in control of uh, before Dan Sterner took that uh, spearing major, a five-minute major. Things kind of unraveled from there. The Sun Devils were able to force overtime, and then they won it in overtime thanks to the captain, who has been nothing short of spectacular so far this season. He definitely has. He might have to have to be spectacular again this weekend against that Lindenwood team. That's all the time we have for this week. For Ryan Hess, Nick Lukowski, and myself, thanks for watching. Tune in next Wednesday for another edition of Hell Frozen Over.